Join us as we track the development of children from birth to the school gate. The journey from naught to five. The toddler years are a time of great curiosity and adventure. It's the stage of discovering a sense of self. And it's what you can expect from one to two year olds. Identical twins, 18 month old Oscar and Charlie, and 19 month old Emily are eager to assert their independence. Jo is looking forward to meeting our two families and knows this age well. By now, most children are walking and climbing. Not only are they breaking down towers, but building them up again. The make-believe play is starting, and they'll be wanting to do your household chores. Language is developing rapidly, as are their skills in doing things for themselves. Yay. Meet Annette a secondary school teacher who has a 20 and a 22 year old from a previous relationship. Glenn, Annette's partner, is studying to be a primary school teacher. Connor is the son of Glenn's previous partner. Get all that? Well, this is Emily, whose mum and dad are Annette and Glenn, and she's keen to make her presence felt. I've noticed a big leap in independence mm. where it's, I want to do it my way. Mm, right. And, uh, an example would be feeding time. Mm. It used to be we use a spoon, now she will not eat, she'll refuse to eat unless she has a spoon as well. It was a good thing and a bad thing because now there's more mess in the hair everywhere. I guess sometimes it's about knowing whose problem is this mm. and how do I deal with that. Yeah. And it, it is about control, isn't it, at this age when they're becoming really independent and wanting to gain mastery over all mm. of these things. What seems like a lot of mess is actually a vital learning process. Good girl. One way of getting through a meal is using two spoons, one for your child and one for you. Here you are. Yep. Mm. Gonna put a blanket on baby, make sure she's nice and warm. Mm. Right now, Emily knows about 50 words, and she's picking up new ones every day. This rapid language development is typical of her age. About three months ago, she was actually clearly saying, Dad, Mum, good dog. Mm -hmm. We're quite upset about that, because she was saying, two, you know, two words for the dog. <laughs> what about us? She was very clear on her words. There was no problems there. We were, like, really excited. Wow, she's learning really fast. And then all of a sudden, it all seems to have downgraded into woof. That's as bad as good as you get out of the dog now. Mm. Oh, woof, woof, woof. And we're like a little bit concerned that she started accelerating with her language and then it's all dropped off. Mm. Uh -oh. I kind of think though, maybe it was because she just started to walk. So maybe you can't do two things at once. What do you think? It's like being on a swing at this age. You know, they can go whizzing forward with great velocity and you think, oh, let's sign them up for Mensa, you know. And then the swing goes backwards and you go, hang on, she was talking in sentences last week. Mm -hmm. And yet it's just all part of that collaboration. Mm -hmm. You know, like, now I'm putting my energies into walking. Now I'm putting my energies into pushing the pram up the hill. Mm -hmm. Now I'm putting my energies into this. And she has those skills. They're already hot wired. Mm -hmm. But they've just become a little dormant. Mm -hmm. So although it might look like re regression, she still has that hot wired and inbuilt and it will just come back when she needs it again. What a day. What a day. As Emily's beginning to take an interest in using the toilet, Annette's keen to know when the right time is for her to begin. Good. Dolly, Dolly's done ways. Well done, Dolly. Toilet training starts at different stages for different children. It's a very unique thing in terms of its timing. Mm -hmm. And the best way to go with it is, as you say, be engaged by what they're telling you. There are three developmental stages that have to be reached before toilet training can start. Firstly, the child needs to be interested in the process, so socially aware. Secondly, they should be able to express their needs verbally. And thirdly, they have to have the physiological connection between the brain and bladder in place. I bought a potty, a nice pink potty, and when I bought it, I was told, oh, but you don't do potties anymore, that's the old way of doing things, because my first two 
were done with potties. Yeah. The new way of doing things is putting a little toilet on the usual yeah. toilet. Mm. What do you think about that? I think that both are really good ways of doing things and you can mm. use them both at once. Mm. Um, you can use the potty for times when there's not that ability to have the control that it takes to get the seat on, get the pants off and then stand mm. on a little stool and get onto a toilet. It's immediate, you just whip your pants down, boom, you're on the potty. Mm. And the potty's portable. Well done. Good, yay. <laughs> yay, that's good. Maybe it's a girl thing, but Emily knows how to get attention. The bubbles are falling down. She's a squealer, mm -hmm. and not all the time, but when she goes off, it's uh, it, it gives you headaches, mm. and it could be joy, or it could be anguish. It seems to make no difference in the squeal. It's the same squeal for both those scenarios. I've tried different things to try and stop her from doing it. Um, the main one being me trying not to get angry at it because it's pain. Yeah. It's really hard to not turn around and go, Oi, stop it. Um, yeah, what's wrong know. with that? I don't want to scare her. Okay. Th yeah, did that seem scary to you? Oi, stop it. Well, not. Well, with a raised volume, I would think okay. it was. One of the problems that you've mentioned with that is that it's one of those things that can um, provoke you into an anger response. Mm -hmm. um, and that there's a positive and a not so positive side about that. One is that it's a human reaction and it's a real reaction. Mm -hmm. And if you weren't reacting in that way, it would probably be quite insincere. Mm -hmm. But also you don't want to frighten her. Yeah. So it might be that, given the human response, you go, Emily, quietly, mm. you know, so that she hears that actually this noise hurts, this isn't an acceptable noise, and then you show her what the acceptable mm. is. It's okay for her to have a little fright mm. without being frightened. Mm. You know, she okay. can learn that, whereas if you go quietly, 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 it's just a big game. Mm. But again, that's going to be a frustration time for a limited time, mm. as you know, mm. even though you might be going deaf in the process, <laughs> until she has words that the squeals then don't have to represent. Mm. Puppy. Okay, it's your bottle. It seems to me that mm. you're aware of the things that mm. she's finding a little difficult mm. and the things that you're finding a little difficult, but also the things that you're finding enormously rewarding mm. and the ways that you're intervening with that, which is in, in sense of a really respectful mm. discipline mm. that honours who she is and honours who you are mm. without shaming her and making her feel inferior. Mm. Good. So you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, puppy. No, no, it's me. Put your music on. There you go. Meet our second family. This is Jane, who has her work cut out for her at home. Craig, who's a brand manager in textiles. Samuel is five years old. Pippa is three. And here are the 18 month olds identical twins, Oscar. And Charlie. Your twin boys, what sort of things are you noticing about what they're up to at the moment and their quest for independence at this age? Their personalities are starting to come out a lot more now, so they tend to play a lot more and do a lot more things independently as opposed to following what the other two are doing. They're very um, easy going, I suppose. Yeah, they're very relaxed kids. Yeah. It is far easier having two than one. They just cruise around the house together. They amuse themselves so easily. At this age, language skills are limited, which normally makes sharing a frustrating process for children. <laughs> Papa, could you please give Charlie a cheese toasty? With twins, I imagine that's quite different at times, that there is more of an ability to share. Tell me how you might notice that. Certainly with Oscar and Charlie, sharing has never been an issue. Charlie, would you like to give that to Oscar? Okay. Give him your half-eaten one. It's very generous of you. Um. I think with twins, they've had to wait from day one, whether it be wait to be changed, wait to be fed. Your There's a lot of just, oh yes, mum's got to attend to Charlie or Oscar first and then my turn will come. 
So, Oscar might go up to Charlie and nick his toy. But Charlie's just not phased. Oh yeah, I'll just go and find something else. He can have it, he's my best mate. <laughs> Water. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Oscar and Charlie's routine is kept to a minimum to fit in with the rest of the family. Sit down, please. We were not going to be up 24 hours a day. So right from day one, we made sure they were fed together. When one woke up, the other one was woken up. I've been in their room when they've been waking up and I just find it incredible. It's like he senses my mate's waking up now, it's time to get up. <laughs> and their tastes are similar with their diet and... Very much so. They've only been given the same food right from day one. I never made anything different. If one didn't like it, that was it, he went hungry. But all the kids were the same, we'll never make a second meal. If they don't want their dinner, then tough pickies, you'll wait till breakfast. <laughs> So how did Jane and Craig handle discipline? Sit down, please. We tend to have a lot of structure in place, and it's the same for all four of them. So if someone does something that they shouldn't, then they are treated exactly the same. And it works. It works. Certainly once the children are at the age where they can understand what they've done and how they should have done it, Thank you. then you don't tend to get the problems. As long as it's put in place early enough. If one of the children misbehaves, they get a warning. If it's ignored, the child is asked to sit in a designated quiet chair for 30 seconds. If they don't comply, they go into timeout. OK? You're not to hit Oscar on the head. It hurts. OK? So you sit there till I tell you... You just get down to their level and reason with them. And don't just tell them what to do, I think. And certainly after they've been naughty, if, say for example, if they've been in time out, then they'll just get a handshake or a cuddle afterwards. And then it's just occupy them in another area and they're away. Charlie, come back in now. Good boy. OK, if we go and read a book. Book? Book, yes. Where's the book? And talking about getting down to their level is actually a really respectful thing to do. It's less threatening for them and they're far more likely to come on board and, and be inclined to do what it is you're trying to achieve. Yeah. As far as disciplining the kids, then we've both got to have the same um, ideals. If one of the kids goes into quiet time, then it's for the right reason and we both back it up and not, um, not disagree about it. Mm, working together. No. No. Dog. Woof, woof. Um, yeah, and, you would that. you like to ask nicely for that instead of just snatching? The boys do learn a lot from Pippa and from Samuel. Mm. Mm. And they're seeing the boundaries and what happens That's right. by what happens in disciplining the older children yeah. too. And they'll test them too. They test the boundaries. Big smile on their faces. They do something know. wrong. They, they, <laughs> they look around to make sure you're watching so that they. So they do get some, I guess, get attention, but so they know that you're, you're looking at them when they, um, when they throw something in the wrong place or pull the bed to bits or whatever they're doing. Point to the tractor. Tractor. As a mother of four, Jane's time is stretched. To avoid the children fighting for her attention, Jane makes a point of giving them individual time. Tractor, that's right. I just make sure I have time for all of them, one on one. I make it a priority there too, but I think if you can make them all feel as important as each other, then hopefully there won't be that problem. Mm -hmm. Really? Mom, yes. no. As a special needs child, Samuel is learning sign language to enhance his ability to communicate within the family. Right. This is benefiting Oscar and Charlie. He's got his fork now. Careful with your fork. There's sign language going on for these twin boys, which is an amazing exposure for them and will probably enhance their verbal skills. That's right. Mm. The comprehension of Oscar and Charlie is way earlier than what it was for Pippa. Right. Yeah, I'm amazed at what they could understand and now them talking at their stage, whereas Pippa wasn't talking this early. Right. So some of the things that some families might be struggling with with 18-month-olds, you're kind of just 
cruising through because the boys are doing it together and there's yeah. not the same kind of That's disruption right. or conflict or... Have twins, yeah. they're the best. <laughs> Where's Charlie? <laughs> By the way that your eyes light up when you talk about them, I'm imagining that they feel pretty secure and that they're just thriving here. Well done. Really? <laughs> Cardboard milk cartons can be put to great use with children of this age. Make a flat top where the opening was and cover with brightly coloured paper. You can line them up on the floor and knock them over with a ball like Skittles. This is good for hand-eye coordination. Ruby can kick them over too. Great for foot-eye coordination and balance. Should we stack them up again? Put the green one up like that. And then we're going to put some pink ones. Talk to your child about patterning. This is an early maths concept. Green way up, green at the top. That's it. And they can be used as blocks for stacking. It's getting really, really tall. Yay! Oh. I don't like it when you blame and shame me. All it makes me do is feel guilty. The reason I do something wrong is usually because I don't know what I should be doing and it makes it worse when you tell me off in front of other people. Active movement, making the connection between movement and learning to develop the whole child. <laughs> One of the most important things I think we have to take on board is that we have to be active with our children and we have to actually be role models. There's so much learning to be done if you're actually interacting and being what we call an active educator while the children are playing. It's important to use language and emphasise words like down and you're going through the tunnel and you're going over the slide and things like that because language like that is very, very important for children to gain an understanding. Going to get up, up and down. Go, you can go under. You're lying on the balloon, aren't you? Oh, it might pop. It might pop and make a big noise. In different contexts, the language of direction means different things, right? So yeah. this is the toe of your head. This is the toe of the toe. Yeah. How can top be here and top be here? Yeah. So when your child goes to school and the teacher says, I want you to write your name on the top of the page, where's top? Yeah. And if I haven't had an experience of, of top, and not just one experience, but lots of them, then sometimes it's difficult for me to make the connection. And down. And down. Reach for the, we reach uh, for the ceiling. Now, down. the other thing is, when you're giving her instructions, yeah. I want you to realise that probably she doesn't have the capacity to be able to remember more than one thing. Mm. Rule of thumb is children should be able to remember their age less two. Things. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. So if you've got a three-year-old, probably yeah. only one thing. Um, but for Emily, because she's not two yet, mm. uh, her capacity is probably quite little. Mm. So for her, when you give an instruction, if you want her to carry out that instruction, you actually have to stop talking after you've given the instruction to give her time mm. to do it. Push the cat. Push the cat. <laughs> you can make household chores, learning experiences. Oh, very good. Ideas include giving simple instructions, talking about colours and numbers. Mummy's got some socks, look. Two socks. In the basket. Yay. Is she uh, into posting? Loves it. It's the gauge where I need to practise letting go mm. and learning about my fingers and how I can release, all that kind of thing. Mm. So this is the age that they will want to post in whatever shape or form they possibly can. I want to find the circle. There you go. And you talk about the circles and the shapes and they're putting it in and out mm. and you see how the language all ties in, but I also learn about does it fit? Mm. And that's the mm. important thing mm. about posting. Which shape? You like that one? Okay, well, let's find the shape first. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. Fits in, good girl. It's important that we use language that, in, that encourages children to take risks. And I might say safe risks, not risks that might be you know, life-threatening or mm. endangering, endangering them. Because we're very quick to go to say something like, 
Don't do that. You might hurt yourself. Guys, one, two, three. Woohoo! <coughs> there you go. Emily, woohoo! So, what happens if you quickly jump in there and stop them trying something before they've even had the experience? Mm. What do you think happens? They'll stop doing it. That's exactly yeah. right. She's climbing upstairs, which is okay. We've taught her how to climb up the stairs and to get down again safely. Come on, Emily, up, up. But yes, taking that risk is kind of, ooh, but. But if you teach her to do it safely, mm. Mm. then she's going to learn that technique. And the more she has the experience of doing that, mm. the more confident she's going to be. Mm. Have you got any questions that you'd like to ask? It's been noticed that her feet kind of curve in when she's walking. Do you know anything about inverted feet? That's apparently what well, it is. Well, it might have something, and I'm not saying that it will, mm. but a lot of little children actually sit in what we call the W position, mm. with their bottom on the ground and their feet splayed out. We try to discourage that. Mm. I'll tell you why. When you're first born, your hips are turned out about um, 180 degrees, right? Mm. It takes about oh. 18 months for them to turn. We mm. call that pronation, where they mm. turn. Now, if you sit in a position like that, where you're turning your hips inward, mm. what can happen is if you continue to do that, the hips can continue to turn, and so therefore you can get children who have knock knees, pigeon toes, mm. or walk with their feet turning inward. Mm. What I like to teach bums and dads, you know, if they're wearing bare feet around the house, which is really good to do, mm. because you get that sensory stimulation, mm. paint her wee toenails, put some wee faces on her toenails. Mm -hmm. So when she sits, you can say, can you see the people on your toes? Mm. Make it a game, mm. and they don't realise, mm. then it's just something that we can perhaps change that behaviour. Mm. It's worth a try. Yeah, it's worth a try. Yeah. The important message here is be active yourselves, be a role model, right. and enjoy, enjoy the journey. So far, so good. <laughs> Emily, watching them come down. Wow, pretty bubbles. Down they come, down.